Coach, how are you? It's great to see you. How's everyone? Great. Good. Hey, thanks. Good, good. So we appreciate some of your time this morning. Uh, and uh, welcome back to the new season. We're going to get started right away for you. Uh, the first question will be from Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Coach, welcome back. A couple questions for you. Uh, defense is obviously the standard. How do you see this team being different defensively in what you do this year compared to last year when you had like an elite defender like Franz on the floor? Well, we had more than just an elite defender in Franz. You know, fortunate enough, we had uh, many guys that was committed to uh, buying into the defensive side of the ball. Um, I was truly impressed with, you know, how everyone has really, you know, committed to that end uh, as far as getting uncomfortable with some of the details uh, and the level of, uh, of technique that we, we coach here. But uh, now uh, where we are today is, you know, we have another team that is, is bought in and, and is continuing to keep working and building the, the def defensive habits that will uh, carry over hopefully throughout the year and give us a uh, competitive chance of, uh, uh, of winning a ball game. And how have you seen the freshmen kind of pick these things up and from day one to now? Oh, I've seen a lot of growth uh, from day one and into where we are now. Um, and like, like I said earlier, the buy-in is definitely there. Um, and then also what's been special about our group is that they're not afraid to ask questions, which that's what we uh, we we really committed into uh, welcoming that. So um, when a guy asks questions, that, that it shows that you know he's trying to you know figure it out, to pick it up, and make sure that he'll be able to apply everything that's being taught. Um, we have an amazing group that has that uh, attitude and commitment to uh, doing whatever we can to help the team win. Uh, next question is from Andrew from M Live. Hey, Joan, good to see you. Uh, very important question. What are you and your staff going to wear tomorrow at the game? Uh, we haven't decided yet. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different ideas thrown around, but, you know, it's good to know that we have options. Like, I guess are our, our, among those options going back to the suits. Obviously, you didn't last year, but I know I didn't know if that was partly because there were no fans there and there will be fans again. Or is that on the table, the suits? Uh, options and everything is on the table, including possibly wearing a uniform. Who knows? <laughs> might come out with a throwback uh, number 25 uniform. All right. That'd be something. All right. Thanks. Next question is from Matt Leach from WTKA. Hey, coach. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing most out of the team here in this first exhibition game? Um, a team that's going to go out and compete from start to finish. Um, you know, what I've also been impressed with is uh, we have a group that, you know, is really bought into sharing the basketball and playing for one another. And also, have you changed, uh, have you changed up the, the approach at all this year? with having that bullseye on your back being the returning Big Ten champ? Uh, approach, meaning what approach you're speaking of? Just to to the season, uh, to the players, just again, knowing that you will have even, you always have a bullseye on your back being Michigan, but having an even larger bullseye knowing that you're returning champ and everybody's going to be gunning for you even more this, this season. Well, uh, the Big Ten basketball is one of the most competitive conferences uh, there is in college basketball. So um, from top to bottom, one through 14, uh, they're, they're going to only have great talented teams, but also great coaches. And I think every team in the Big Ten has a bullseye on their back because we're so deep. And uh, last year's last year, by being a new year, there's a new trophy. And we're one of the teams that's going after that trophy. Next up is Anthony Broom from the Wolverine. Hey, Juwan. It's been a long lead up to the season. A lot of camp battles going on. And a lot has been made about the battles between, um, you know, Hunter and Musa. So how have you seen both of those guys grow through that? Well, it, they've both been competing hard in practice. and But that's what I expect. Uh, but it's not has been a focus on, like, the two of them battling against each other. Um, you know, we have a, a, a great front line. Uh, with Hunter, 
um, Musa, Brandon Johns, uh, Terrence Williams play a little bit in that front line as well. Uh, you can mix Jace Howard in there as well as uh, Jaron Foles. So uh, we've um, had some very competitive practices uh, from top to bottom um, and, and on that, not just by position in the front line, but overall in general with the entire team. I, I left, you know, a lot of days as I'm driving home, leaving the building, thinking like, wow, you know, our guys really are competing and beating up on each other. I can't wait till we get an opportunity to play against our opponent and see what it really looks like when you play against a, you know, a team other than just um, guys that, you know, they see every day in that locker room. Next is uh, Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Hey, Juwan. Um, it seems like teams across the country have anywhere from one to three exhibition games. When you're putting together a schedule, how do you decide how many you want? And if you only have one, is, is that a harder challenge than if you have three tune-ups to get ready? Well, you know, this... I can't really say as far as, you know, it's good to have two or three, you know, big um, exhibition games, but I will tell you this, that one exhibition game truly helps. Um, and having a scrimmage helps as well. Um, you know, I, I'm, this is my first time that I'm aware of that there are teams that have more than one exhibition. Um, you know, I've always, ever since when I played in college, we only play one exhibition, if I recall, and then we'll jump right into the season. Uh, but, you know, I will definitely go back, Michael, and uh, investigate that and see what's best for us for the near future if we should compete and have more than just one exhibition game. Coach, we'll go back to Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Coach, can you share anything about what you liked from uh, your scrimmage with DePaul or maybe what you didn't like and what you'd like to work on? Oh, I've seen a lot of really good things in our scrimmage uh, for both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, I thought offensively, you know, we did a really good job of, of moving the basketball, making the extra pass. Um, you know, there every guy played well from top to finish. I mean, from uh, top to bottom uh, on our roster. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I thought, you know, we were great in, 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 on that level as far as, you know, being disruptive, um, uh, very challenging shots. Um, d did a really good job of, you know, keeping guys in front. Um, also, uh, fouls, you know, we, we weren't out there just fouling because sometimes, you know, I see in practice we get so physical that uh, we sometimes, you know, foul each other too many times. And, you know, my, my concern is I do not want that to become a habit where, you know, it leads into, you know, the season where uh, you put in teams to the free throw line and then also you get into a bonus early. Uh, we would continue to keep uh, growing, um, you know, from what I took from that scrimmage is, you know, there's always room for where you can improve. Um, and we identified that those areas. Uh, we had a really good film session the next day on what areas where we can clean up. Also saw some really st good stuff on film where uh, we had a lot of growth from where we were from uh, day, our first practice, September 29th. Uh, but leading into tomorrow, you know, it's going to be another, you know, game where we're going to compete uh, and we're going to see what we can learn from that game and see how we can help prepare ourselves for next week. Next up is James, Hawk, James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Hey, Juwan, just a couple of quick ones from me. Um, is everybody healthy and available to play for tomorrow? I'm sorry, you kind of broke up there. Oh, is everybody healthy and available to play tomorrow? Uh, to my knowledge. Um, okay. All right. And then, secondly, have you have you named team captains? Uh, we have one. We have one captain, and that's uh, Eli Brooks right now. When did you uh, When did you name him? That was last season. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Bob Ojanowski from the Detroit News as well. Hey there, Juwan. I I'm wondering with. All the freshmen you added in the transfer and, and the returning players, how first do you think the competition will be and will it evolve and continue through the season for starting positions? Like, do you consider you have kind of 10 starters or how do you view uh, the rotation in this early stage? Well, we have, we, we're going to present five starters tomorrow. And, you know, every guy is still being, um, I would say judged in, in a positive light of as far as what's best 
uh, for our team moving forward. I haven't decided as far as how many that we're going to go with when it comes to a rotation. Uh, the rotation uh, is still being decided and, and looked at. And, you know, we have time. Uh, there's no need to rush. Uh, it, it's nice to have a deep, deeper roster than I've had before. Uh, the most important thing is have healthy bodies. That's the most thing I, I'm really concerned with, just healthy players. I wonder, just a quick follow-up, does a deeper roster definitely has benefits? Does it also have challenges to try to figure things out? It has benefits, a lot of benefits. It's all coaches will tell you, it, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> uh, we'll go back to Andrew Kahn from MLive. Dwan, I think last time we, we spoke there, Chrysler, you, you said, uh, you know, this year compared to your first two years, things were moving slower for you. That was something that, you know, you felt you improved on as a coach. Things were moving fast for you, you know, or earlier in your coaching career at Michigan. Can you, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like what, what exactly you meant by that? No, I just will just to say it exactly what I mean earlier. It's things just now is slowing down a little bit and, uh, We'll continue to keep growing as a coach and learning uh, what, you know, being a head coach at a, uh, a high institute, uh, one of the top five powerful, was it, what is it, power five conferences here. Um, we'll continue to grow and see what I can do to help best serve uh, this program and our young men. I think as far as like, obviously you have a ton of responsibilities with on the court, off the court, just sort of. Yeah, you want to trade? <laughs> uh no no i, I think our <laughs> skill sets are, are utilized well, I, right now I, I know i can't write a paper i know that or <laughs> an article i mean i'm speaking of I, i'm right. not good in that field so i take that back i do not want to trade your job for my job i love my job yes, I, I i enjoy mine too so yeah i guess i just meant like all, all these things you have to, to juggle you now feel you have a better sense of i don't know time management and things like that yeah, it's a lot of things that you do juggle, but they're still, you know, it's more than just X's and O's right. uh, when it comes to being a, a head coach at a, a University of Michigan. And and that's something that, you know, I've welcomed and there's something that I wanted and I, and I love it. Thank you. I really do. I love it. Yeah. We'll go back to uh, Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Juan, you mentioned the, the physicality and practices. Um, I imagine, you know, sometimes that will maybe lead to some opportunities for free throws with so many young guys. Have you gotten a chance or a sense of, of what type of free throw shooting team you might be this year? Uh, no, I have not, but we do practice free throws, Michael. And uh, I'm just uh, keeping my fingers crossed that when it comes game time, whether we're here in Chrysler or we're on the road, that uh, when we go to that free throw line, uh, our goal is to be, you know, a really good free throw shooting team. And, um, just keep my fingers crossed that uh, we'd be better than, you know, how we shot the, uh, from the free throw line last season. Uh, I remember my first year here uh, two years ago, uh, we wasn't a great free throw shooting team. And then we've had growth uh, from the first year to last year. And, you know, I, I hope, I'm praying that we can continue to keep growing, climbing in the right direction. We'll uh, head back to uh, Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Coach Caleb came in with that reputation as a shooter. What have you seen from his all-around game? And can you get rebounding from that position that you're going to need? Yes, uh, I, I trust we will get rebounding from that position. Um, uh, we've worked on it in practice. We'll continue to keep growing in that area and also making an emphasis on it and how important it is uh, to limit our opponents to one shot opportunity. Um, Caleb also, um, it's more than just a shooter, you know, like I've seen the complete package in his game on uh, he can make passes and make plays for others. Um, he's also a guy that's doing a really good job of uh, of reading uh, whether it's a ball screen coming, being patient, setting this man up and coming off the ball screen. Or if he's in a situation where he's making a screen for someone else to get another player open. Um, and then his overall IQ, um, you know, it's for a guy at his age, um, you know, if you go back to it, you know, Caleb reclassed up. <laughs> so uh, he could easily be an incoming freshman next season. But, you know, 
I've been impressed with his his level of maturity as well as his basketball IQ and how he just is a complete player that has a certain type of demeanor disposition about himself that seems like he's been around for years. Coach, that looks like it's going to be it for today. We appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the game. Thank you. You guys stay safe out there. Thanks, Coach. All right, folks. Uh, great to have everybody back again, like we said, and uh, we are joined by graduate transfer guard Devontae Jones. If we could utilize the uh, chat system again for him, uh, we would like to be able to uh, get questions for him. So does anybody want to start? Devante, why don't you talk about the excitement of actually getting started, uh, putting on that uniform, even though it's an exhibition game, but just sort of talk about your transition coming to Ann Arbor and now it's it's here for real. <clears throat> um, first off, I want to say thank y'all for having me, but it's, it's been a great transition. Um, I'm very excited. I know my team is excited. You know, uh, we done built a, a bond very quickly. You know, I'm, I'm cool with all these guys. I feel like I've been knowing them for years, especially with me, Hunt, you no know, Eli, Caleb, um, you know, Musa, and Frankie, and all the rest of the guys. I just feel like we've been knowing each other for a long time. So, um, exhibition coming up, you no know, tomorrow. So it's gonna be a very exciting thing for us. Um, the scrimmage was great for us. You know, um, it was a great job to get a look at how we. Um, um, how we get together as a team, how we, you know, play together. And um, it's just, it's, I can't wait. Tomorrow's going to be amazing. We'll take a question from Daniel Dash from the Maize and Blue Review. Devonta, you said the scrimmage against DePaul was great for you guys. I'm curious, what stood out in particular? Uh, what stood out was just, uh, was the chemistry, um, especially with the, with the starting unit. Uh, I feel like we came out great. You know, a lot of defense intensity. Um, the offense was smooth. You know, you usually get to a group of guys and the ball gets stagnant. Um, everybody want to take a lot of dribbles. Everybody want to keep the ball in their hands. Everybody want to make plays. But it was just so smooth. You know, just playing with Eli, you know, Caleb, Brendan Johns, and Hunter. Um, it's so easy um, offensively and defensively just to get everything going. So um, it was just a great transition. You know, the second five came in. Uh, they showed that um, they, got a, they got a chance of really, you know, helping this team, you know, win games. So uh, I just can't wait until we all put it together. Next up is Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Dante, having gone through a, a couple of college basketball seasons in your career, what are the types of things that teams can generally learn about themselves in the first couple games of a season uh, once you face real competition rather than just scrimmaging against yourselves or, or having a, a behind closed doors scrimmage? What do you learn the, the first month or so of a season about a team? Uh, I feel like that first month is really just about testing your character. Um, I feel like it's the beginning. I don't, we don't. I don't feel like this team is gonna be at gonna be at our best at the beginning. And I, I try to tell our guys that, especially the freshmen, that um, we're gonna win. It might be some ugly wins, but you know we just putting it, we just putting this stuff together. It's gonna be it's gonna get better and better as the, the, um, the season continues to go. So, um, like I said, at the beginning is all about testing your character. You know, Buffalo gonna come in, give us their best shot. So, and we understand that we know Buffalo is a gritty team, you no know, hard nosed team. So, um, Juwan Howard and the rest of the staff be doing a great job just um, telling us that. Um, they're going to come in and give us everything they got. So just um, stay the course and um, we're going to get the job done. Next up is Jack Kingsley from the Michigan Daily. Hey, Devontae. Um, so is there anything that you've focused on adding to your game or improving within your game throughout your college career that you think has helped you got, get to this point? Well, I think overall, just everything, um, understanding that, you know, me being a part of a team, you got to be able to do a lot of things, especially at the at 6-1, you know, being able to shoot the ball, uh, defense, you know, just be able to rebound, um, playmake for other guys. And that's just been my my key, just being, being able to playmake for, you no know, Hunter, Caleb, you no know, Eli, just playmaker for all those guys that I know that are really dynamic on the offensive end. So especially my defense, I find my defense um, is something that stands out a lot. Um, I'm a hard-nosed defender, no full court, so I just feel like that's another thing that um, I just keep me going. Next up will be Andrew Kahn from M Live. Mine was asked and answered, so thanks. But hello, Devante. Hey, how you doing? Next up is Anthony Broom from the Wolverine. 
Hey, Devante, when we talked to uh, Frankie Collins in camp, he mentioned busted lips and physical practices, uh, especially with you guys in the guard group. Um, how did that intensity carry through camp? And, and also, how do you feel like the freshman guards have responded and developed from that? No, that's amazing. Um, going to practice, knowing that um, you're going to end up coming out with a busted lip. Uh, Brandon Johns came out with a black eye. It's just, it get, it get real physical in the practices. Um, Cause everybody want to want playing time, so everybody competing for rotation spots. So I love it. You know, me personally, I love competition. Knowing that um, if I go in and I don't, and I don't bring my best, you no, know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get out work, and that's just something that I just can't, I can't live with. So um, it's been a great camp. You know, all the freshman guards were doing great. Frankie, Cole, uh, even Ian, you know, he coming in and um, bringing some energy in. You know, Isaiah Barnes. So you know, all of them been great. You know, I love all the intensity. They all work out each and every day. You know, try to get better. They all study and watch film. So. Um, we got a uh, special group of freshmen. We have a follow-up from Michael Cohen from the Detroit Free Press. Devante, when it comes to some of the younger guys, what are maybe some checkpoints or things that you would look for in their growth early in the season, aside from obvious stuff like, you know, if they score points or if they grab a bunch of rebounds, what are some of the smaller things that you would look for that indicate their progress in games? Um. Well, speaking on uh, Frankie and Kobe, just making certain reads, you know, in practice, um, they have trouble making, like, uh, the next level read. And I feel like as as games go, um, I would love to see that growth and them being more patient. You know, um, I feel like the speed, they're getting used to the speed right now. So that's something that's just really, you know, bothering them just a little bit, not too much. But, but um, them, them two guys, they're always in their study books. So they always study and they always, you know, look and see how they can get better. So um, I think their transition would be easy. You know, but I feel like the first couple of games it might be, you know, a little rough form just because the speed of the game and the competition is going to be different at this level. Thank you. Uh, next up is Matt Leach from WTKA. Hey, Devante, what's the uh, the biggest adjustment that you've had to make with your game being the focal point at Coastal Carolina to now playing with a, a very talented, but like you said, also a very unselfish team? Um. Honestly, for me personally, it haven't really been like a big change. I mean, at Coastal, I just did I just did whatever was necessary for us to win. You know, at Michigan, Juwan told me to come in and just be me. So um, I'm not really a scoring guard. That was just something I had to do when I was at Coastal. Me, I love passing the ball. So um, I'm coming in the perfect situation. Um, I'm coming in passing the ball to guys I know that can knock down shots. I know that I can make plays on their own. So it's just been an easy transition. I haven't really had to change anything, honestly. Um, this really who I am, just a pass first guard that can score when needed. And do you feel the the need with all of these young guys, a lot of very talented guys coming in, but being one of the older guys, even though you're new to the team as well, do you feel like you need to be a leader for this young group? Of course. Um, of course. I feel like me and Eli Hunter right now, we, we're the leaders. I feel like this, everybody lean on us, you know, um, when it comes to guidance or, or to have any questions. So, I mean, being a leader, I don't, I feel like being a leader is not just, you know, you've been in a certain place for a certain amount of time. Being a leader is just understanding that um, you can help somebody um, that's new to, you know, college um, and just giving them, you know, picking, you know, just let them pick your brain. Because I've been here, this is my fourth year in college, so I understand, you know, all the ups and downs. I understand the highs and lows, knowing that you're going to have good games, you're going to have bad games. The fans are going to, you know, get on you when you have a bad game. But I feel like that, that all comes with, you know, being an athlete. So I feel like they definitely need me to be a leader. Appreciate it. Uh, we have a follow-up from uh, Daniel Dash from Maize and Blue Review. Devante, a couple of minutes ago, Jawan called Caleb Houston the complete package, talked about his ability to pass the ball, make reads out of ball screens, and just his general IQ. Uh, what have you seen out of him throughout this fall that kind of dispels the notion that he's just a shooter? No, I, I, to I totally agree with uh, what Jawan said. Uh, Caleb have shown the ability him to make reads out of ball screens, be able to pass the ball. Uh, he can rebound and push it himself um, with the ability of not only just making shots, but he can get to the rim, you know, and finish at, and finish at the rim as well. So um, he definitely does a complete pair, complete player. Um, that real dynamic. He also can defend. Um, you know, a lot of guys just come in and just want to score the ball, but um, he definitely takes pride on both ends. So I just I love his work ethic. Work ethic. He's always in the gym, you no know, putting up extra shots, you no know, just trying to get better. So. Uh, Caleb Future definitely is bright. Next up is James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Hey, Devontae, earlier you, you mentioned the, the good things that stood out in the scrimmage you guys had. Um, I guess, are there any areas you want to see the team do better in in tomorrow's, in tomorrow's exhibition? Uh, 
I mean, I feel like it's always, you know, areas we can get better in. Probably defense. Even though I, I said our defense was pretty good, I just know we can be, you know, a lot better than, than it was. I thought we gave, we gave up um, some shots that we shouldn't have gave up. Um, definitely rebounding. That's probably one area. I want, I'm not going to say we struggled in, but I feel like that's one area we could have did way better in as far as just rebounding. Um, as a unit, you know, we can't just around like one or two people to rebound the ball. We got to do that more as like a unit. But, you know, other than that, I feel like everything else was solid and everything was good. And knowing that we can get better from that is just amazing. All right, DJ, that looks like it's going to be it. We appreciate your time and uh, we'll see you tomorrow in uh, at Wayne State. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yep. Uh, as you guys can see, Hunter has joined us. If we could utilize the chat room again, uh, he is familiar with the uh, procedure. So, uh, Hunter, before we begin, you just want to kind of talk about uh, expectations for tomorrow, uh, what you learned from the scrimmage, and uh, what, what we need to work on. You're on mute. My bad, Tom. I was messing up today. Um, for the scrimmage tomorrow, you know, I think we're really looking forward to playing against another opponent. Um, you know, in the scrimmage versus DePaul, I thought it was really fun to finally get to play against another team for once, you know, stop being on each other and, you know, get to play a new opponent for once. And so I think it'll be a fun experience for us, um, especially since there will actually be some fans in the crowd this time um, versus DePaul, it was closed and nobody was in the stands. So, you know, I don't think anybody got that ex that real experience of a, you know, real atmosphere yet. And I hope that, you know, Wayne State, you know, the crowd will be pretty nice and there will be a good turnout, um, especially for the younger guys to be able to experience that as well as me and the other sophomores that still haven't had a real, you know, full crowd yet. But um, I think it'll be a real fun game, a good test for us. Um, Wayne State, you know, they're a really um, gritty school, or like a really gritty team. And, you know, I think they will be a really good test for us um, just to, kind of test us on our habits defensively. I think they're really good, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one team. And so I think we'll be really tested in that area. Um, for DePaul, uh, I feel like that was really good for us just to, you know, finally play somebody new, like I said earlier. Um, I think they'll be a really good team this year. And for us, um, you know, it was a really good test for us to see where we're at um, and just, you know, being able to have coach put different lineups out there and see um, what's working and, Help build that chemistry for us. Thank you so much. Uh, first up will be Anthony Broom from the Wolverine. Hey Hunter, lots been made of uh, you know physical practices, a physical camp for you guys, uh, especially a battle between you know the battles between you and Musa. Uh, how have the both of you guys grown through that, and what type of progress have you seen uh, from him? Yeah, um, our practices have been physical. I think they've been ramping up um, as we've gotten closer to the season. Um, I love going against Moose every day. He's a great competitor. Um, high motor, really works hard and uh, really makes me work on the defensive end. I think, you know, he makes me better every day. So I really appreciate him for that. And, you know, I try to give him the same thing uh, when he's guarding me. I'm trying to get him ready uh, for Big Ten basketball. I've seen a lot of growth over, you know, the couple months that we've been together. And I think um, he'll be a really good uh, factor for us and really help us. Next is Daniel Dash from the Maize and Blue Review. Hey, Hunter. A couple of minutes ago, Juwan was talking about hitting the reset button after last year. I think the, the phrase he used was new year, new trophy. Uh, what's the balance like between staying confident being the, the reigning conference champions, but also understanding that it's a, a new season and, you know, everyone's 0-0? I mean, I think, you know, we're always like, I think as a basketball player, you need to be confident in um, like your skill set and what you're able to do. I think uh, coach really used a good line. I think it was like last week. And he said, like, you know, I think we're still kind of the underdogs. Like we're not overwhelmingly picked to, you know, win the conference. You know, we still are um, like battling with Purdue and like a lot of polls to see, you know, who's going to win the conference. And, you know, we're not ranked number one in the country. So I feel like, you know, uh, oh, that was the line. He said, we're not the hunted, we're the hunter. No pun, uh, no pun intended on my name, but um, – I think, you know, that's a great point. Like, we're not, like, the number one team in the country. We're not the only overwhelming favorite in our conference. And so I think for us, um, I think we're still, like, you know, the team that's hunting down other teams. I think we have a chip on our shoulder still. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to play with for sure. 
Next up is Matt Leach from WTKA. Hey, Hunter. Uh, Devante was just with us, and he mentioned your name as one of the, the leaders uh, standing out here going into the season. Do you feel like with such a young team, even though you're only a sophomore, that you needed to step into one of those leadership roles? Yes, I feel like, you know, because of um, the youngest, the youngness and inexperience on our team, like you said, um, I feel like, you know, me um, playing the role I did last year, I feel like I have a wealth of knowledge that I can share with the younger guys and kind of bring them up to speed on, you know, what we're doing and the kind of the Michigan culture that we have here. And I feel like, you know, the coaching staff has put it upon me to kind of step into a leadership role with Eli and, you know, try to just lead the younger guys and bring them along as best we can and get them prepared for Big Ten basketball. Thanks. Next up is Clayton Safey from the Wolverine. Hunter, Franz and Isaiah were such good defenders on the wing. I guess what have you seen from the guys that are stepping into the, those roles? And I know Brandon, you know, played a lot last year too, but in terms of helping you out in the post, scraping down and things like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the two guards, um, I think they speak for themselves, Eli and Devontae. Um, those are going to be two of the best defending guards, not only in our conference, but I think in the country. Um, I think Caleb has grown a lot since he's been here. Um, Coach Howard is definitely preaching to him on um, being a two-way player. And I think, you know, he's really taking, um, you know, full advantage of that. And, you know, he's taking big strides. And I think, you know, he's only going to get better as the season progresses with that. Um, Brandon, like you said, um, I think he's a really good defender and he's continuing to get better each and every day as well. Um, that's something that Coach Howard, you know, demands from his players as being a two-way player, um, guarding, you know, your individual matchup, taking that personally, and then also helping out others. And so I think, you know, this year, um, those guys will be really good defenders for me, but then also Musa coming in, um, I think he's a really good um, just overall athlete. And I think that really helps him on the defensive end. Um, he's really good in the passing lanes and just uses his, you know, long arms super well. And so I think he'll be somebody who's definitely a big X factor in defense for us. We have a follow-up from Daniel Dash. Honey, you just touched on Caleb. I'm curious, what is he like off the court? And I guess, how well have you gotten to know him so far? Uh, Caleb's a little... I guess shy off the court if you don't know him, but I think like he's he's a little reserved. But you know, once he opens up to you, he starts talking. I think he's really funny. He's got that Canadian like accent to him. That you know, I think he's really funny. Um, his aneurysms and like the way he laughs is really funny for me. Like you know, if I say something funny and he starts laughing, I laugh even harder because of it. But um, he's really fun to hang out with. I think he's you know really reserved and um, I think he's really just about his business on the court. When did he first start opening up to you? Uh, I mean, I think it was, you know, pretty quick because I feel like, you know, being, a, you know, in the basketball um, and being a teammate, you kind of have to like, open not quickly, but like, you know, you're around them so much in the locker room, on the court, off the court. And so uh, I'd say like, you know, with a month or two in, you know, that's when I started to really get to know him and, you know, talk to him and you know, kind of figure out who he is as a person. We have uh, James Hawkins from the Detroit News. Hunter, this is a two-part question. Um, just what did you see from the team in your guys' scrimmage against DePaul that you liked? And then uh, I guess just what do you want to see the team clean up in tomorrow's exhibition against Wings? Um, what I really liked, I think, you know, in the first half, uh, we were up 17 at halftime. And I think, you know, the team was just really clicking on all cylinders. I think we were really sharing the ball um, and just really executing um, offensively, but then also getting stops defensively. Um, the second half, I think uh, that's when we really started to share the ball was when we went, um, we did the zone um, segment where both teams had to play zone. And I think, you know, we did a really good job of sharing the ball. Uh, Caleb was really going off that quarter. So we were trying to make sure to find him in his spots. Um, I think something that we probably would need to clean up is just um, not having a dip um, with the second unit. I think um, when we made the subs at halftime, um, they kind of came back on us a little bit in the second half. So I feel like keeping that energy up, I think that starts with the people who are getting subbed out. We need to make sure that um, we keep we keep the people on the court energized um, and pumped up for um, their play. And so I think, you know, just it's a matter of just, you know, staying in the game. But I think, um, you know, there's a lot of great things. There's probably defensively, you know, we watched a lot of film on, 
you know, how we can get better. Um, me personally, just, you know, I feel like uh, running back more and getting in the getting in the gaps, not just jogging back with my man, but um, kind of getting back early and kind of helping my teammates out so they don't get straight line drives on the fast break and transition. I think that's something that um, coach pointed out to me a couple of times. It's something that I'm trying to get better with right now. And Bob Wojnowski from the Detroit News. Hey there, Hunter. Um, you mentioned if you guys aren't the hunter, aren't the hunted, you're the hunter. But what about you personally with your stature and willingness to uh, express yourself? Do you feel a little bit um, hunted by others? No, I, I mean, I feel like um, I'm very motivated this year um, to prove myself. I feel like I still have a lot of doubters out there, which um, I'm glad for because that gives me the motivation that I need to go out there um, every day. You know, I feel very highly motivated this year um, to do better than I did last year. And I'm really excited to go out there and um, be with my teammates and win a lot of games this year. Okay, Hunter, that's going to do it. We appreciate your time and uh, good luck tomorrow. We'll see you, see you at Wayne State. Thanks, Tom. Tom, thank right, you. What's that? I said thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'll be sending this link out just in case you were unable to record it. And uh, we'll see some of you tomorrow in Detroit.